Dean Sir, Dean CMR School of Legal Studies, Professor Dr. B.J. Praneshwaran Sir, Director CMR School of Legal Studies, respected faculty members, colleagues and friends, I welcome you all to this faculty development program. The objective of this four day online FTP is to allow interdisciplinary engagement, discussion and debates between faculty members so as to rethink and reassess the overall theories and practices of law. I now request our student Ghana to kindly render the invocation song. Devi Pore Sharade Parade Devi Pore Sharade Parade Sangita Sahitya Kala Pramode Sangita Sahitya Kala Pramode Devi Pore Sharade Barade Vidya Devate Vidya Pradate Vidya Devate Vidya Pradate Vidya Mate Modite Sangita Sahitya Kala Pramode Sangita Sahitya Kala Pramode Devi Pore Sharade Barade Devi Pore Sharade Devi Pore Sarade be pore, Sarade Barade. Unmute, man. Unmute. Am I out? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Ghana. I now request Dr. T. R. Subramanian, sir, our Dean at School of Legal Studies, to present the welcome address. A very good evening to all of you present here. On behalf of the CMR School of Legal Studies and on behalf of the CMR University and the Board of Management, I deem it to welcome uh, Professor Dr. Anurag Deep. Professor of Law at the Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. We have been organizing uh, the faculty development program in the last preceding several years. This is mainly done to improve the skills of each teacher. Now, unlike the past, the present day generation needs a lot of key skills because they were cultivated at a young age. So when the situation is like that, the teachers, when they go to the class, are supposed to know, uh, impart better skills to them. Now, a few of you may ask a question saying, what do you mean by these skills? Now, maybe when I speak of it, especially for the law students, there are many things which come into the picture. Now, first is entrepreneurial skills. When I speak of entrepreneurial skills, the teachers, when they teach, are supposed to highlight certain points which help them in joining their jobs. A few of them in the final year on passing may join the judicial service. A few of them may join the banking service. A few of them may join the financial sector. Or a few of them intend to join the government service. Now, at that time, you may be teaching procedural law or substantial, substantive law. What exactly is required? What exactly is the mind of the student? How best a teacher can help to cultivate these habits in the classroom is the job of the teacher. That is a skill and an art. Now, you may be knowing that the government of India is also 
in its new education policy speaks much about the skill development now your qualifications at a is only considered at the entry point when once you, a student enters the profession only his skill matters so that is where almost all the policies of the government speaks about it even the honorable prime minister of this country has spoken in several platforms now at times i feel are we going back to the olden days where in certain people the carpenter son is only a carpenter or a goldsmith son only a goldsmith or similarly like that let us not worry much about it but then professional skill has to be developed and teachers should play a main role in cultivating these habits in the classroom now there are of course the other factor that is being taken into consideration is the employability criteria now you might be knowing you must have read a few of them a few years ago our narayan murthy or the infosys foundation chairman of the infosys foundation has pointed out most of the engineers when they pass out the employability employability criteria is very less and very meager and only 35% of the past candidates could be appointed for the jobs this is what he was saying and today uh, if you seriously consider it is not 33% or 35% it is less than that that is where the teacher's role is remember immense he should help and develop the skills Uh, at every level now uh, the other aspect that is which is required and every every time it is being spoken happen to be uh, the what is important is the preparation to the class then the imagination for the mind then the articulation all of them re- require i mean need not require special mention because we have been speaking about it and we know this what should be done now your teacher should be in a position to give good sources and these sources especially in the national law schools because i have been a teacher there i have seen now students instantly ask and when we give the sources they say remember sir the source which you have given is outdated and why don't you give the source later and you should be in a position to defend it as well because a good teacher is one who explains the principles and when he explains the principles that the, the cases that come up which are materially relevant will be cited by the teacher inside the classroom that is where other developments which have taken place either through the case law or by the substantive law will be taken up by the the student or the others who research on these matters and they try to write so these are certain things which i just wanted to bring it to your knowledge and your information i am really grateful to sir uh professor ragdeep who kindly accepted our invitation and is with us and he will be with his immense experience in years of activities he will be able to explain us and give us uh, a wonderful uh, uh, talk to all of us so that it will be a feast once again with best wishes to all of you thank you for your words sir I feel honored and privileged as I welcome Professor Dr. Anurag Deep between us today to inaugurate the series of sessions to be conducted across the next four days for all faculty members at School of Legal Studies at CMR University. Dr. Anurag Deep is currently serving as Professor of Law at Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. He completed his education at Banaras Hindu University, Varanasi, with various merit scholarships and PhD at Gorakhpur University. He has contributed to the potential development of law students of backward areas by inaugurating the case-based teaching in the Indian Upadhyay Gorakhpur University for students of rural sector by providing them complete judgments of the Supreme Court of India in local language. He has also organized various literacy camps and supervised many PhD students under his able guidance. He has written in local newspapers on various social legal issues and and prepared academic programs for Gorakhpur Doordarshan channel. He is also the editor of the ILA Law Review and annual survey of Indian law. We welcome you, sir. I now invite our speaker, Dr. Anuradhi, to share his thoughts. Thank you very much, Arju. Honorable Professor T R Subramanian, sir. 
Dean School of Legal Studies, CMI University. Other esteemed dignitaries present an online mode for me, an offline mode for you all. Learned faculty members present here for this FDP or associated with the university. Other researchers, non-teaching staff, technical staff who is making it possible that sitting in Delhi, I'm able to talk to you in Bangalore. I feel privileged to be a part of this faculty development program because of various reasons. One is that a faculty development program is a development program for me also, the way it may be a program for you. I must have presented around maybe 50 such faculty development program. And each time I find that Every program has made me a little more wiser. And then every program has let me know, oh, oh my God, I how little I know. Because the thing that I used to know yesterday in my delivery, I found that it is a little suspicious and I have to improve further. So I'm really thankful to CMI University. Except Subramanya sir, the other person I know is Arju. Arju has done her internship with me, very talented. Then she did her LLM also from here. I'd only say that you have imported a good talent from this side and I am sure that you have imported talent from all over India. And in order to in order to sustain an institution, this is probably one of the primary requirements for which Professor Surumanya sir deserve great appreciation. Now, let me make it very clear at the outset that it is not a lecture. It is an interaction. And I will try to make it an interaction. I'm not aware how the technology can be helpful or not helpful. So I have a PPT also. I'm trying to upload it. I will also ask certain questions and I will request everyone to feel free to answer. And I hope almost all of you make some interventions without hesitating whether it is good or bad, without hesitating or without thinking what other people will feel about this. Is it uh, uploaded now or not? Good. Now, let me begin with the generational change that I have witnessed in the area of legal teaching. When I joined as a law student, in 1994 in Banaras Hindu University, I had the company of great teachers. 
but these teachers were not essentially required to write something in the area of research it was a type of maybe optional thing they were extremely dedicated teachers but it was not probably very essential that you have to write everything you have to write in the journals published books this was not an essentiality when i joined the legal profession as a law teacher 2001 the situation remained same for the next 6 7 years but 2006 or 7 onward writing in journals writing for chapters publications in toto became extremely important if you do not publish the chances of promotions are gone after 15 years this 2001 on 2021 onward i find a further change and the change is that we are required to write we are required to publish but the things have become far more hard i can publish i had published in some journals without taking care of whether it is in ugc care list or not there was no such list indeed without taking care what is the impact factor without taking care whether it is in web of science or scopus or not and i had risked to the position of maybe professor here but the things have become harder for you because you are not only required to publish you are also required to publish in ugc care listed journals you are also you are required to publish in scopus and web of sciences some of these things scopus and web of science seems to be certain very new to me and when i talk to some senior teachers they have heard about it but probably they don't feel comfortable with that but anyhow this is this is the three change in the three these are the changes in three generations so the publication in my previous generation was easier in my case it was little hybrid in the sense it was sometimes easier and sometimes in the ugc care list but in your time the young persons that i see on my screen they are required to publish in ugc care list and scopus and web of sciences and others so while the new generation that includes me also has the advantage of doing research through online which makes access of material little easier at the same time publication has become difficult and that is why the focus area of today's discussion is how to get published in good journals what are the ingredients as arju has mentioned i had been associated with some of the journals i am in the i am editor of two associate editor or editor of two journal one from ili i had the responsibility of editing annual survey of indian law another esteem journal so i had some idea what type of articles are coming when i send it for reviewers what reviewers want and ultimately what our editorial board wants and let me tell you 
in simple terms that they don't want some discard, some rocket technology. Of course, they need something. They want something that probably you know. I will only present it in an organized fashion. They do not. They are not asking for moon, but they are asking for something. But what is that thing? This part, this thing, we we need to understand. I have changed the slide, and I think it is changed. There are five, six key drivers for today's discussion. First is to understand the meaning of research, especially in the area of law. Secondly, are we conscious that research and steps of research are two different things? and this is the place this is the point where good number of articles do not make distinction between research and steps of research third is what are the strength of a good writing so rule of uri puri that i shall try to discuss then what are the weaknesses that we in our inadvertently that we do then some illustrations this may come not at the fifth point but maybe after first i change the slide now to begin with i think the learned participant can see that the topic is topic written is or the, or the words written are access to police station there are around 28 police stations in bangalore suppose i have given a task to a student that can you write something something like research paper on access to police station and please give me a draft give me a draft of access to police station the researcher goes looks for some website and he has given me the number of five police stations they are not essentially of bangalore they are hypothetical you can see the 5 1 2 3 4 5 numbers are there it may be 28 it may be 20 it may be 25 for our conceptual understanding let us suppose the police stations are 1 2 3 4 5 it is the name of the police station he has presented he or she the researcher has presented these numbers the point is is something lacking is it a research work that he has presented i think you are getting my question the question is that five police station number of five police stations have been given maybe in the sentence format it is not currently in the sentence format in the sentence format the researcher says that police station number 1 has these two police station police uh, mobile numbers police station number 2 has this number and like all five numbers my question is is it a research work this is one on access to police station is it a research finding i would also say is it a research finding number 2 third if you agree why do you agree four if you do not agree what is the reason that you do not agree so question is out 
i will see your opinion uh, i hope uh, you are able to speak and i am able to hear arju is it possible Uh, you are audible, sir. Acha, yes. I am audible. So one by one, one by one, any of you can just give me your name and then you can convey me what is your opinion. I pose three, four questions. Access to police station is the topic. The researcher comes with these five police stations, gives the number, police station number, and says the research is done, sir. Give me another task. what is your opinion on that is it a research work and the reasons yes or no yes please anyone can try don't wait for others it's not so it's not very good very good can you introduce yourself just your name anjana okay you say it is not okay so can you can you pass one reason or two reason for this why is it not so because uh, it's something which is easily accessible and there is no quest there is nothing which been searched for there is been there is been no question which is arise for the uh, search uh is yes, some yeah, it, there, Ha uh, there is there is Hello Ha uh, yes please Hello Yes yes please Sonali ji Yes uh, yes uh, good afternoon sir sir this is Dr Sonali Kusum I am faculty from Tata Institute and we have obviously met and I have presented paper at ILI thanks to you sir I, and I do uh, I do the work <laughs> yes i just want to say that this is very much a researchable topic i think because when we say access to police stations i think we were looking at what are the laws probably we are going to look at critically the laws which allow access to police station in the sense what are our rights for instance we have right to file fir dk basu guidelines we are looking at law we are looking at judicial developments just to identify like are these laws are these Uh, judicial developments being uh, implemented so we are going to look at but of course it will be little empirical uh, considering maybe there is a use of data or some kind of a consideration we can have but i think there is a doctrinal aspect also because we are going to look at do we have a right to visit police station we do have because we have the right to file fir and i think dk basu guidelines provides the rights of us in also that we can uh, have some rights when we file fir just to get a copy okay. of fir things like that okay, so i sir. think yes thank you so much sir that any other opinion the question is that the thing that is placed before you the researcher says sir, sir this is my research finding i have done two three days some work i have done and three days i have found research task that is given by you uh, access to police station what is your opinion yes any other person i have found there was one opinion which says that no it is not uh, and some reason was given to be the reason i was not able to get the reason if the reason can be conveyed again why they feel that is not a research finding sir that is because there is something which is easily accessible and there is no contribution of you towards that particular study very good why well, yeah, okay very good your good name is chandna hmm, chandna chandna very good so chandna says that this is not a type of research or research finding because these numbers are easily available online and there is no original contribution so there are two points that is coming that these things are easily available so things which are easily available are cannot be a part of research finding they may be one of the step of research that we go do some literature review go and search for uh, online and then we 
then we that we so so what it cannot be because it is easily accessible is something which is easily acceptable for anyone uh, for the purpose of law is not a research one we need to do something else and then the second point suggests what is something else that is original contribution so placing the material placing the data in a decorative form in an organized form 1 2 3 4 5 this number this number this number this number also it takes you have to give your time you have to give your energy you have to apply some mind but they are they are not research indeed for the purpose of law they are not research finding because there is nothing original in that so i think i think this is really a very good answer anyone who wants to supplement further supplement channa yes anything you want to add to it Yes, please. Sir, so, uh, apart from what uh, was already said, that there is no original evidence, uh, the other part of the discussion is missing. This is just the starting point. Like in the papers, at that point, the researcher also visit the police station and see uh, whether. I think I think Vipasha Vipasha is speaking. I think the yes, voice sir. voice is voice. Is, Okay, there might be some network issues, sir. Ah, so if you can, uh, 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 there, there is some, there is some possibility you can use chat box also. You mean other skill also use chat box? Ah, uh, uh, because yes. your 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 opinion is valuable to us. Yes. Any other? How do we address the first slide? Which contains phone numbers. If you have to do further research, you have to place it like something which is some research has been done. How? What will you do? So visiting the police stations is the next step. I think. Visiting the station. Okay. Visiting the station and seeing whether the officers are being. Visit your country, whether they are appreciative or not, whether they are listening to your uh, concerns or not. I think that is that would be the next one. That this is just the first step, what I believe. And then, based on everything, we can come to a high. Yes. All those steps. Yes. Are so, so, so the should have also visited the police station. Uh. if he is little he or she is little interested in research work because access to police station it is these are the numbers which are easily available but when you make a real access then you find how accessible the police is how accessible the police station is certainly so you go and you visit the place you experience that you try to find which we say verification also verification of facts fact is given certain place but we do verify do verify by various sources and one of the sources you go and you see how accessible the police station is certainly how are they behaving is also a part of accessibility uh do they entertain whether the person who has come to the police station have to wait whether he is heard properly accessibility is not a technical term accessibility is a type of holistic term so the researcher thought accessibility is a technical a clerical type of term number one the researcher has not verified the information whatever information was there online he or she has taken the information 
he has not verified the information at least he should have verified online whether these numbers are working or not working number 1 if they are working whether they are picking up the calls or not otherwise you keep on calling and nobody what is the duration they are taking because police station police we we we, we approach police in certain emergency where you have not more than sometime not more than 2 minute time so if it is only ring bell is going and nobody is responding the crucial evidence may crucial facts crucial information may not be given thirdly if the number is disconnected do they make a call back or not we we have we have seen in hollywood movies this often happen that hero or heroine he or she or a child dials 911 and if it is disconnected there is a call back so the first important the the, the, the theory that one of your participant has presented is available cannot be a research finding and that most of the most of the papers many papers do i will come back to this uh phone number issue take example of custodial death so i found articles which gives you the number of cases number of cases on custodial death and what supreme court has said and what law commission has said and then finally there is a conclusion and conclusion says that police should be made sensitive all these informations are already available in the public domain papers have been written books have been written volumes have been published special volumes have been published newspapers are writing so if we want to write something useful something meaningful something of publishable quality in good journal then for the purpose of custodial death something else is required but what is that something else which is an original contribution so placing data which most of the time we do is not a research work followed by a research finding now this accessibility issue accessibility of police station if the researcher wants to do something meaningful then certainly he has to verify the fact and after verification he or she can write that these police stations they do not pick up the calls immediately some do not ring at all there is hardly which rings back so this is one of the thing you have identified in conclusion one can say that we need to make arrangements that the police takes the call immediately now we cannot uh, so why the police did not pick up the call immediately this is the this is the question this is a researchable question now this comes to our mind why this happened how to address it there are two ways one that we make our mind police is corrupt it is engaged in other business and therefore they don't care this is one way other way is to read and study and to and third way is to meet the police officers and try to find what is the problem why the calls are there but they don't pick up in central bangalore 
and calls are not attended why because most of the police officers have gone to some traffic duty or some vip duties or maybe to something else and there is only one or two person and bangalore being such a busy place especially central bangalore it is not possible for one police officer to pick up the calls because he has to attend others also and this has happened and this happens in many places so so researchers should then try to find what is the sanctioned strength of that police station he or she has to inquire what is the sanctioned strength of police station and he finds that okay sanctioned strength how to find it then in order to find we can look for the government notification maybe rti can also be presented and then you can find that okay in the central bangalore or maybe in the busy police station the sanctioned strength is 50 but only 26 are working if 26 are working it is quite obvious that with half of the strength you cannot expect 100% of the return so this is how the researcher should proceed one by one to know from the actual stakeholder what is the problem now when the researcher will dig little deeper he will find that there is no dedicated line for 100 there is no dedicated line for that cell phone so that that is one reason why it remains busy unlike in many countries we don't have that dedicated line for all the places so can we have a dedicated line what is the financial burden that is coming who is the competent authority to do has the government ever thought about that so the topic is access to police station if we want to make it really really meaningful that this is a very small way to proceed further which will certainly lead time certainly need our concentration certainly need some pain to go to the police station meet them many of them may not address you may not answer us and that is how we can present our finding in the in the research work another point that can also be addressed there are many points one is the point of analysis based on facts facts are presented in the facts there are five police station how will you analyze the fact analysis of fact is certainly another important aspect because that also lead us to further research work can any of you suggest me the facts which are presented before you that is the five police station with some police of some number how do you analyze i am not asking anything else only these five facts are there that five number five police station they have mobile number or landline or dedicated or, or numbers like a default line like the number like 112 100 how do you analyze it yes please I think PPT is visible. Who can try? no one wants to try
yes please is this question sir maybe on the cost which are toll free which are not toll free like you mentioned landline maybe that is one approach which is more directly approachable or directly like which connects fast maybe yes i think toll i think free and some not so toll free yes i think sonali is correct that one Thank way you. to analyze one way to analyze is that there are certain numbers which are cell phone number there are some number which are landline number and there are some number which are default number there are police stations which are still working with only default number as if we are still in 1990 or 1995 cell phone has come but the police station does not show the cell phone number so why a particular police station like jab number 5 or 4 do not have any cell phone number what is so problematic in this this has to be an additional number so one way is that one can way that why police station number 5 has only default number and not cell phone number in 2023 with the cell phone revolution this is one one way to analyze it similar analysis can be made for landline numbers that landline number is given that is good but then why landline number only where is the cell phone number what is so difficult that the cell phone numbers are not provided that too when police service is a 24 hour service so why the phone number so not provided and then the researcher should go and ask the police station that why do not you provide the cell phone numbers why other police stations have cell phone numbers so this may be one may find the answer what is the answer very difficult for me to understand why it is so is it because someone has not taken care of is it because the phone number has not been displayed properly it is already given there may be many reasons but but then one of the finding can be one of the conclusion can be that if cell phone numbers are not provided cell phone number should be provided to them and if they are provided they should be noticed they, they should be noticeable enough so that anyone can approach because one can approach Two hundred or one one two, maybe landline is there, but the cell phone number is something which is portable. So if a police officer has gone to some place, maybe in the vicinity of police station, talking to someone, the cell phone is always there with him to receive any call, to receive any emergency type of thing. So this is one way we can analyze that. the police stations having no cell phone number should have cell phone numbers any other way that you want to analyze and suggest how the accessibility can be accessibility can be uh uh made easier for a common person based on the facts any other way so we find that in this accessibility report there is no mail id and we can suggest the researcher can suggest researcher can suggest that in 21st century that to when almost 25 years one quarter of the 21st century is here mail id should also be there so that those who are comfortable with mail id they can send their complaint the advantage is that when you mail it 
there is something on record. When you phone it, probably there is nothing on record unless you go for the recording mode. So mail ID has become the modern source of accessibility and mail ID should also be given. What is the mail ID? So those who are able to access through mails, they can also keep mail. Uh, maybe you call some sir, the link is not working or the sound is not clear. So in those cases, mails are very much useful. So this way we find that these five numbers are, which are written, which are presented, are indeed <coughs> an essential part of research, essential step of research, but they are not themselves research because they lack any original contribution. There is nothing original is that. And original contribution is not something like propounding a theory. Original contribution is that something which no person has thought of and you have given that. So if you suggest that out of so now the police stations, there are notifications and the police stations have essentially have to contain cell phone numbers. That is one. If you suggest that there is a notification that says that every police station should have a mail ID and if there is no mail ID, then you can write to the concerned officials that the mail ID should be provided to them and they should be trained in those things so that that becomes an original contribution. That also is a step towards reform. That also shows there is some has convinced the authorities and they have given some mail ID to the police station. So this is just a small illustration to differentiate between steps of research and research work themselves. So collecting it, going literature review, going to a, a website, collecting material, arranging material, decorating material may be a significant step to research, but that is not itself a research work because number one, the work is already available. Number two, there is no original contribution. So every researcher should ask these two questions. Whatever I am doing, is already available. If available, that means something else has to be done. Secondly, what is the original contribution? Original contribution which is meaningful, which is useful to society, maybe to the government. Now, what are the six steps of good research work? I think all of you know this, just to refresh our memory, that number one, identify a broad area of interest. Now, this broad area of interest, it is an entirely subjective thing. Six broad area of interest. There can be four, it can be five, it can be seven also. There is no hard and fast rule. But number one, the research area must be your area of interest. What is an area of interest? It is very difficult, I am very difficult to say. You may be teaching criminal law, you may be interested in IPR. You may be... Uh, writing some paper due to one reason, but you may not be interested in that paper. So the first important thing is that are you interested in that field? Now, how to identify is entirely on you. It may be criminal law. It may be constitutional law. It may be law of thought. It may be law and medicine. It may be space law. 
it may be abr it may be drafting and pleating it may be crpc identify the area of research there can be more than one area of research there can be more than one area of interest so number one it is essential that you should we should identify our area of interest area of interest means i like reading that so don't go by what other people say someone says ipr ka bahut scope ho gaya hai international law ka bahut scope hai if you are not interested if that subject does not suit you that not charm you please do not select it as an area of interest so of course one should listen to the suggestions but area of interest please take note i am not talking about topic of interest i am talking about area of interest and broad area of interest so take example criminal law so when criminal law becomes an area of interest then you can one can identify and i have given uh so can we say that okay now criminal law is my area of interest i will do some research in criminal law so even in substantive law their laws which are new law they their laws which are old law for example ipc ipc 1860 law and new laws are there poxo is a new law 2013 law so which law when i say criminal law area of interest so from area of interest we have to further narrow it down so again that depends on our interest or if we can develop some interest so not like criminal law cannot can be only an area of interest it cannot be an area of research why because the criminal law is very wide take example if you are interested in international law then international crimes international criminal court rome statute if you are interested in international law if you are interested in corporate law then corporate criminal liability can be one so identify the broad area of interest when you identify broad area of interest that is maybe criminal law maybe ipr then you immerse yourself in the literature review the word used is immerse that means not shallow we have to we have to go deeper and deeper and study some good criminal law books in order to find which is the researchable area which is an area where things are required to be done which is an area where problems are there which is an area where others have not done so this is how the literature review helps us then finding research questions testable hypothesis research methods and then we test our hypothesis now it is not easy to select the topic and one of the strength of a paper is selection of topic what type of topic you are selecting please make a difference between broad area of research and selection of topic broad area of research may be criminal law in the criminal law it can be prevention of corruption act but then prevention of corruption act itself cannot be a topic for research work because prevention of corruption act is a complete act you are not we are not writing a book that we can write prevention of corruption act a critical study no 
we need to find a particular area on which there are some problems. So topic of research is different from area of research. Many of the research articles, they do not make this difference between topic of research and area of research. So I will further show one or two PPT how the area of research and how the topic of research can be different. So Prevention of Corruption Act. So now you have identified criminal law. In criminal law, you have identified Prevention of Corruption Act. Now Prevention of Corruption Act, what to do? The act is there, there are various amendments, there are various rules, there are various entities. Often the topic comes like that I suggested you. A critical study of prevention of corruption. Act. I seriously doubt this type of topic can be admitted as good research paper in any place. Why? Because of because this is so wide, so vague. So what to do then? So what I will do, I will start studying something on Prevention of Corruption Act through books, through law commission reports, through journal articles published in journals. And when you read, when I read the articles, then I can read to the conclusion that, OK, these are the areas where things are undecided. These are the areas where research work is required to be done. So if we can identify these are the areas where research work is required to be done, we can choose this that as a matter of topic. One of the simplest ways is to find that is any provision is being challenged before the Supreme Court. This is one of the easiest provision, is the easiest way to find a topic. If you find that an enactment has been amended and the amendment is being challenged. I think that area is a very good area of research because things are undecided. The Supreme Court has to intervene. Supreme Court has to decide on that. Of course, in newspapers, there would be some reporting, but then a good article will certainly be very much meaningful. Similarly, a bill is pending. That can be a good area of research if the bill is pending. But kindly note, when you write down that a bill is pending and bill can be a research area, please note that there are a lot of writing sometime on bill. I will give you an example. The bill which is pending for last maybe three, four, five years which protects our digital rights. So this bill is pending. And it is pending for last four or five years and a lot has already been written. So when you choose this bill, be very careful that again a lot has already been written. What are you writing is not available in public domain. If it is, please do not take, unless you are very sure that you are going to write something else. Surrogacy Act has passed in 2021. Sonali has done good work in surrogacy. So the bill was pending and the act has come. So that can be a topic for research one where a complete critical study of bill cannot be made. Please take note. Again, if you are making a critical study of whole bill, that to a longer bill, probably you are not doing justice to the paper. So you can identify, one can identify two, three, four provisions of that particular bill. Take example of Ident Criminal Law Identification Act of 2022. I'm just suggesting you that these are the areas which are narrow, 
work has not been done the newspaper reportings are there but good research articles are lacking so these are the areas where one can identify and based on our interest we can start doing some research work now you can see that the, in the slide the first is u r i u uri and because in ili we students often say that sir it is very difficult to know how to select topic what to do so i thought that i should develop some formula it is a small formula u r i u r i stand for u it stands for that i have already told you unexplored the topic that you are trying to do the area that you are trying to cover is it an unexplored area second is it relevant r stands for relevant and third is it a matter of interest i told you that you indeed it should be decided in a reverse fashion first see whether you are interested to do sometime some people ask me that sir i am publishing a book on ipr and that is from sometimes from very good publishers and i often say that no i am not a person of ipr of course in criminal law constitutional law or human right i can help so interest followed by relevant now relevancy now we need to make a difference relevance means a number of things are relevant but it may not be relevant for a new researcher because it is already explored can i give you a small example take example of i will give you two example one from constitutional law and one from criminal law again what are we discussing we are trying to discuss how to select a research topic using the formula of uri so take example of capital punishment capital punishment is a topic which takes the attention of everyone it is headline so if someone comes to you or comes to me that sir i want to do some research work on capital punishment i will not encourage him or her to do on capital punishment and now i will throw question to you what is the reason that why i will not encourage the researchers to do some write something some research work on capital punishment can you can you give me some example why uh, because most of the areas are explored yes so you have you have found the answer in the word you that it is not something which is unexplored how to find whether an area is unexplored or not unexplored tell me so when we uh, rely on any specific topic of interest we will have to search whether there is work done on that or not so if it is already done and you're not able to find a gap in the study okay in the text yes so we can make an intelligent guess yes. that this is a topic on which for last 50 60 70 years a lot has already been written there may be more than 3 4 law commission reports there may be some parliamentary committee reports there may be reports of many ngos it becomes very very challenging for a new researcher to write on capital punishment so many times the researcher come to me and they say that capital punishment par sir maine bahut acha article likha 1950 se lekar 2023 tak ke sare case law discuss kiye hain crpc mein kya kya amendment hua tha maine usko bhi discuss kiya hai article 21 se kya link hai maine usko bhi discuss kiya hai but sir my article is not getting published 
Do we know the reason why is it not getting published in good journals? It may be published in some, maybe some journals, but I doubt that it will be published in some good journals. The reason is that the number of cases you have given is already available in public domain, and a number of people must have written on these cases. In the time of chat GPT, especially the higher version, especially the paid version, if you give a question, that can you give me some leading case? Can you give me some leading case? Excuse me, just a minute. So if you if you write, I don't know whether you have used some subtype chat GPT or not, but it is free. You can just go on chat GPT, login. The way your Google login is there, you can use that Google login. And then a space will come and you will write, give me leading cases on capital punishment in India. And chat GPT will give you the name, number of the cases. Or if you write, Give me 500 words on cap judicial decisions on capital punishment that Chat GPT will give you. Sometimes they are wrong also, many times they are right. So the problem is that you have read a number of cases, but that is the work is already done. How will you convince that it is a new work? So this is the problem, and this is the problem with many articles happening. Many articles. But is there a scope that suppose you are very much passionate to do research work on capital punishment? Is there a scope, still a scope to do research work? There is always. There is all, there are always research, there is always a scope for research work in capital punishment. Can anyone suggest me a title in the area of capital punishment? which can convince that yes yes this is an area where research work is not yet done yes please suggest me. please suggest me. application of uh, jurisprudence of deference theory application of jurisprudential on the application of the theory of deference theory of deterrence but then i i am afraid I'm afraid a lot of work has already been done on theory of deterrence. I think you are you are you are you are close to the answer that I want to give, but that is not the answer. Anyone, any other person can try, any other learned participant can try. Sentencing commission, sir. Sentencing commission can be can I think be a good area because we don't have a sentencing commission like foreign countries and probably not much has been written. I agree. I agree. So when you write a critical study of capital punishment in India, this article, this topic is likely to be rejected without reading the article inside, let me tell you. But if you write sentencing commission and capital punishment in India, then probably people are going to look for and flip through your pages. Okay, this seems a new idea. What is this? Very good. Can you suggest another topic? Anyone? So maybe post sentencing, post capital punishment. What is uh, in those countries where capital punishment is banned? Post capital punishment, the impact of the um, impact on um, the crime or something like this impact on criminal justice system, impact on crime, post capital punishment, something like this. Yes. I agree, completely agree, that it is often said that punishment has some deterrence and capital punishment probably has the maximum deterrence. It is the idea of deterrent theory, one of the idea of deterrent theory. So what is the impact of capital punishment? And I seriously doubt that on the impact work has been done on capital punishment. So even if so, primarily this topic should not be selected. But if someone wants to do 
he or she can take this type of topic, capture punishment. Uh, uh, that what is the impact? Now again, impact is a difficult area. How will you know the impact? You have to develop the methodology. You have to find how to examine this impact. Uh, so, is it really deterrent? A lot of hypotheses has already been given and they are presented like theory. No, it is not deterrent or it is deterrent. But no study has been made. So if you make some empirical study, maybe uh, a study in different groups of 1,000 people, uh, whether they feel that capital punishment is really threatening, really uh, uh, means really deterrent. So this study has not been made, or if made, not many people have done, and this can be done. And the simplest way is that it can be done maybe taking one district uh, as a universe. So in one district you can do, other can do in other district to find the opinion of a person. Uh, let me give you another example that is from constitutional law. Another topic, appointment of judges. So the topic comes, appointment of judges in India, a critical study. Let me tell you with, without hesitation that this topic is not going to be published in any good journal. Why? Again, as you rightly said, because a lot has already been written on appointment of judges. Because a lot is being discussed, has been discussed. And they are repetition. And when you, when you write those things, First judge's case, and second judge's case, and third judge's case, and fourth judge's case. And then what law commission says, and what NJIC says, and then what is happening every day. This is only recycling of the facts which are already there in the public domain. So I may feel, while doing, I may feel, oh, we have done a lot of work. We have to read the judgment at night, and we have written the judgment. But then this work is already done. This path is already traveled. What is new in that? In appointment of judges. So, so this is another area. This is one thing that we commit some mistake in selecting topic, maybe for PhD, maybe for dissertation purpose, maybe for research writing. Now, among students and sometimes among researchers also. There is a misconception and the misconception is that if the problem is not solved, then it automatically becomes a researchable topic. No. If the problem is not solved, it becomes a researchable topic only if the research has not been done. Or you have a new type of angle, which is really workable, really workable. So when I ask the students that why this topic you have taken, the appointment of judges, they feel, sir, rose to problem a rahi hai. So okay, problem to a rahi hai, but then what will you do? So avoid this type of topic. Now again, because the problem is there, and problem comes with different type of uh, with, with it changes its varieties with the passage of time. So on appointment of judges itself, there can be topic which can be done. Can you suggest me a topic on appointment of judges which is not only researchable but which is also something where probably research is not done or much research is not done which is either unexplored or underexplored. My question to the learned faculty members or learned participants. Can you find a topic, something similar to appointment of judges, where you can say that, yes, this topic is, is something with where the research has not been done or it is unexplored, underexplored? Any answer, please?
this i think is an easy far more easier we discussed too much on appointment of judges please keep me a research able area and appointment of judges uh, sir, one area could be with regard to the distinguished uh, jurist being appointed to the supreme court distinguished i think i think uh, uh, this is an area where not many work is done to my knowledge there are one or two articles only so your challenge would be that when there are two articles or three articles so one work is done that of course if two three articles are there then you can rightly suggest that two three articles are not enough and i can write for that but then you have to find that what new you are going to do in this to be jurist area so what one can focus is that why judges do not consider this provision of distinguished jurist and what can be done can you suggest me ki what is new what new can be done in this when two or three articles are already there means research articles there are some newspaper reports also how do you add what will you how will you make an original contribution and any other person can also assist yes please okay so let me cut short when you will make when in 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 the distinguished jurist area again why this is not done there is only hypothesis that mr so and so was offered but then this politics happened so it is better to meet the people who are responsible for it to discuss with senior judges of course those who are in the office will not give you time but those who are retired may be like to discuss it so in bangalore city if some of the supreme court judges are they stay so one can take time that sir i want to discuss what is the problem why it is not considered you can move to maybe ncr region where a number of judges are uh, stay here meeting these people making some question questions and finding their views what do they think then another point is who is a distinguished jurist because uh sometimes we tell that mr so and so is a distinguished jurist but he has crossed the age of 65 years huh uh is a professor of some law university is a vice chancellor of some law university essentially a distinguished jurist who is a distinguished jurist persons having 50 publications become a distinguished jurist how do you know so i feel this is an area which need a deeper study that how to find that someone is a distinguished jurist someone writes and writes a column in the newspaper does it make him a distinguished jurist so can you find eligibility further eligibility to identify who is a distinguished jurist so this is but i can suggest you what is an area what are the areas where in appointment of judges many areas are not yet done if you make literature review you will find when the njsc judgment was given then after the judgment the judges you know njsc judgment was 4 is to 1 four agreed that njsc is unconstitutional and one judge agreed one judge said that njsc is not not unconstitutional it is constitutional but all five agreed on one point that was the collegium system needs reform so after that they have identified four area secretariat complaint mechanism this type of and transparency and indeed they have called 
all intellectuals, lawyers, academicians, that give us suggestion, but nothing could be done that alone. This is an area where no research has been done. Why to go for appointment of judges, look for what happened in first judge's case, second judge's case, third and fourth judge's case? Why to go, what is government doing, not giving notification, what judge is telling? No. This is an area where Supreme Court itself has highlighted we want these four things. I doubt anyone has done any research work in appointment of judges in this particular area. You can do. Take example of appointment of ad hoc judges. The provision is already there in the constitution. Our framers of the constitution, they are great visionary. They have made provision for ad hoc judges, but the ad hoc judges provision have never been used. Why? It does not need a constitutional amendment. It only needs chief justice plus the president, both agree and ad hoc judges can be there. So why this has not been done? How to do it? So this can be further area of research. Then area of research can be in the appointment of judges that judges who are being appointed in the tribunals and judges who are appointed in the high courts through collegium is there any qualitative difference in tribunals in nhrc in similar type of commission it is not the collegium that appoints. It is the government that appoints. Are there qualitative difference? If the government is telling that collegium system is bad, then is this system which is already parallel working, but, but we do not take note of? Is it working well? So we can make a qualitative study of this. So I, I think I have taken up my time. Surmanya sir has allotted me 90 minutes. I have three, four more uh, 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 slides to go, but because time is gone, so I will just conclude that a good research work is something which attracts, which sustains. How many movies you want to see two times, three times, four times. There are movies, not many movies you want to see many times. But probably if you ask me, I'd like to see Three Idiots, though I've already seen it seven times, I won't mind seeing it eight times. Why? What is so peculiar in that? That is the, that is the test for a research paper. Something new something out of box, something interesting, something reformative, something which is easy to understand, something that agitates our mind. That is the test for a good research paper. If you write with these ideas, I am sure this, the articles will be published, not in one place, then in other place, at least in ILI Law Review, which is with me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ramanya, sir. I would just also like to add that on research methodology, on how to select research topic, on how to do good research work that I try to do. Uh, there are some videos which I have uploaded on YouTube with the name Anurag Deep ILI. You can look for those videos. I'm also happy to suggest that you can see the Law Commission report on sedition, which has recognized the work of ILI. We have a book on sedition law, and that book is profoundly relied upon by the Law Commission of India, and that book is quoted more than 10 times in 80-page report. So that gives me additional confidence to say that when you do your research work with these parameters, your research work is recognized by India. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you so much for your work, sir, and for taking our time from a busy schedule and enlightening us all. I am now... still open to I am still open to the questions and comments. Thank you. If there are certain questions and comments, that can it can be asked. Victimological study also. The test is simple: that is the victimological study done or not done? Are there articles or research papers or not? If there are no research papers, if there are lack of research papers, that is researchable article. See, we often when we select topic, we often ask: is there material hai ki nahi? Yadi is there material hai, upse research nahi karna. Very simple. Agar research, agar material nahi hai. तो उस पर रिसर्च करना है एंड देन दैट विल बी पब्लिश्ड ठीक है दैट कैन बी द टेक्स्ट यस थैंक यू वेरी मच एनी अदर क्वेश्चन आर वेलकम कमेंट्स आर आल्सो वेलकम सर आई वांट टू आस्क वन क्वेश्चन यस Sir, my question is related to comparative research. So, if I am comparing two jurisdictions, like say from the European Union and India, so uh, regarding anything, my uh, area of research is IPR, geographical indications, and I am doing a comparative study between European Union and India. But the governance is very different. European Union is completely different in India. Will that be a good research topic? because india not much research is done on the uh, gis but it is done in the european union there is a lot of material for european union but not much for india and specifically northeast india it's extremely less that be a good other thing i should find thank you see i often say that every research work should contains two c the first c is a critical study the criticism criticism means what are the strengths and weaknesses of the particular area of research that you are doing and second c is the comparative thing comparative thing again is something like you make jurisdictional study because jurisdictional study also attracts the reader jurisdictional study also attracts the editor jurisdictional study so if you have made a jurisdictional study of uk europe so it is good and we should always keep this comparative as well as critical however when we make comparative way of research uh there are certain things which we really take note of number one what is the geography what is the geography what is the population so india is 114 crore 140 crore and there are countries they are just 4 crore 5 crore 6 crore 7 crore we often compare with uk and uk is around 7 crore so you you add bombay and delhi and it becomes the population of uk you need not to add, add any other any other thing so geography number 1 population number 2 history number 3 cultural diversity number 4 and then other scientific development five six factors should be considered and before we suggest that something is happening in that particular european country so we should import that is not a right idea we may of course 
we should take anything which is good from any side ano bhadra kartavantu vishwata all good things should come from all good side that is good even a small country european country if it is doing good and it is suitable to our country we will take but the best of the thing which is not suitable to our country we need not take so you should always take care of these five six things at least these five six things the geography the population the technology our history and our culture and then we should decide and of course uh, in certain cases our neighbor we have a hostile type of neighborhood so uh, our neighbor also same things we should always take care otherwise comparative study always attract and that study you are doing that is very good take note that in in gi also i have found in many places that there are comparative studies being made so you have to do something and always try to make always try to suggest how this is useful to india or how the other country can learn from us both the things can be given that how this provision or this practice of particular country can be really useful to india uh, so this this should always be there yes thank you Um, since there are no further questions, uh, I would uh, uh, once again convey my thanks to you, sir, for taking your time from your schedule and enlightening us all. With that, I now request our director, Professor Dr. V. Chakraneshwaran, sir, to present the vote of thanks. Thank you, Arzu. It was uh, really uh, a wonderful uh, delivery of a uh, topic like research uh, usually uh, very difficult to keep the audience uh, captivated on a topic like research how to do research but very wonderfully done with live examples it was almost like a like a workshop and uh, the response of the faculty is testimony to that on that note we are extremely thankful to professor dr anurag deep professor of law the indian law institute new delhi for addressing us on the faculty development program on the nuances of uh, legal research thank you very much sir and uh, i noted about uh, he, he recognized his student it's a it's a see, yeah, students recognizing teachers is one thing but then a teacher recognizing student i also could see the uh, a proud moment on arzu's face when her uh, name was referred to her by her professor see this speaks about the teacher this speaks about the resource person thank you very much sir speaks a lot about you and uh, the kind of work that you have done and uh, uh, one of us went without uh, notice with uh, all faculty enjoying and the, the most important the interaction again once again thank you very much for enlightening us we are also extremely thankful to our uh, beloved dean professor subramanya for bringing in uh, sir uh, professor anurag deep to address us thank you very much sir thankful to all the participants and all the uh, tech team for making this uh, online event uh, 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 this session of the online event a grand success thank you very much so now i will be uh, permitted to log out